In part A of the question, we are asked to find a symbolic expression for the total electric potential due to the first two charges at the location of the charge marked 2Q, so right here. Now we all know that the electric potential due to a single point charge is given by the following equation where we have the Coulomb's law constant multiplied by the charge divided by the distance to the location of interest. Let's come down here below and magnify the diagram. Remember that the location of interest is right here, so you're trying to calculate the total electric potential at this point. And in order to do that, we're gonna to need to figure out what the distance is from each charge to that location. Now we can tell by the symmetry of the picture that the distance from this upper charge to the location and the distance from the lower charge to that same location will be the same, but we still have to figure out that distance. So we have come off on the side and have redrawn the picture, and we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the distance. So we can see from the Pythagorean theorem we have c squared is equal to d squared plus the quantity 2d squared. If we square the 2d, we will get 4d squared, and then 1d squared plus 4d squared is 5d squared. Let's square root both sides, and we have the square root of 5d squared. Now remember, that can be rewritten, because you can kind of split that up into the square root of 5 times the square root of d squared. And of course, the square root of d squared is just d. So it really is just radical 5d. Some of us might prefer to flip that around to d radical 5 just because that ensures that the d is outside of the radical. So anyways, that is the distance from each charge to the location of interest. It's d square root of 5. Next, what we'll do is we'll fill in the information into a sort of chart just to keep ourselves organized. This isn't necessary, but I find it to be a useful device. We do have two charges that are contributing to the total electric potential. We have one at location A and the other at location B. Notice that each of those charges is just Q. They're not different. It's not like one is Q and the other is 2Q or something like that. So each charge is Q. So that means when we go to fill in our chart below here, we'll just use Q for both of those charges. The distances were also the same. They're both D square root 5. In fact, since the charge and the distances are the same, we're going to have the same electric potential contributed by each one. So we plug into the equation. We have K sub E times the charge Q over the distance D square root of 5. And then the same thing for the other charge. So again, just a useful way of keeping track of the information. What we want, of course, is the total, and we specifically want the total electric potential. So what we're going to do is simply add the electric potential of the first charge to the electric potential of the other charge. So we can say that the total electric potential is equal to K sub E times Q over D radical five plus another K sub E times Q over d radical 5. Luckily the denominators are the same and so we can go ahead and add the numerators. We would have 2 k sub e q over d square root of 5. This would give us the total electric potential at that location. That's the correct answer to part a. We can move on to part b and part b also wants a symbolic expression for the total electric potential energy of that charge marked 2q. Now, the potential energy, or rather the electric potential energy between two charged particles is given by this equation right here. But what we have to do is apply that equation two times. We have to apply it because there's going to be an electrical potential energy between these two point charges, but then there will also be an electrical potential energy between these two charges right here. So to get the total electrical potential energy on the charge mark 2Q, you have to make both of those calculations and then add the results together. So we'll go ahead and do that, and we'll say that the electrical potential energy equals the following. Let's do the one in purple first. So we'll take the Coulomb's constant, K sub E, we'll multiply it by the charge Q, and then we'll multiply it by the other charge, 2Q. And then we'll put this over the distance between them, which we have determined to be D radical 5. Now we'll do the one that is circled in blue. It's the same thing, isn't it? You're gonna take the constant, multiply it by the charge Q, and then multiply it by the other charge 2Q, and then put that over that same distance. Now each numerator, if you were to multiply them out, the 2Q times the Q is 2Q squared. So really you're gonna have two, let's see, what order should we put it in? We'll do two K sub E Q squared. You could also do two Q squared K sub E, wouldn't matter, over D radical five and then the other term will be the same. Once again, we have a common denominator already, so we can just add the numerators. 
we're definitely going to get 4KEQ squared over D square root 5. So that would be the correct answer for part B. We'll take a look at part C next, and part C wants an expression for the kinetic energy of the charge 2Q after it has moved infinitely far from the other charges. Now this is going to be a relatively easy concept, a re relatively easy calculation. And the reason for that is, okay, so you start out with this arrangement of three charges. We know that initially we have some electrical potential energy. It's equal to that expression that we derived in part B. But because the particle marked 2Q is initially stationary, there's zero kinetic energy. And then it moves infinitely far away from the other charges. So it's somewhere out here, infinitely far away, all by itself. It's now moving, of course, because these positive charges have repelled this other positive charge. And because it's so far away from the other charges, the final electrical potential energy is just zero joules because there's no other charges in its vicinity to create that electrical potential energy. But of course that energy has to go somewhere and it goes into the form of kinetic energy. Now the conservation of energy tells us that that final kinetic energy is simply equal to the initial potential energy. And therefore, this final kinetic energy that they're asking us for is the same as the initial electrical potential energy. So no further calculation is needed other than that. This becomes the correct answer to part C. So then we'll do part D and it wants the speed of the charge 2Q once it's infinitely far away. Okay, so we're going to calculate that and we know that the kinetic energy is equal to one half times the mass of the particle times its speed squared. Because we're solving for speed, we might want to isolate V here. So why don't we multiply both sides of the equation by two? And that way one half times two is just one and it cancels out. We can then divide both sides of the equation by the mass and that cancels out the mass. And then finally to get V squared isolated, we just take the square root of both sides. So after cleaning this up a bit, we have the square root of two times the kinetic energy divided by the mass is equal to the speed. Of course, for the kinetic energy, we're gonna be filling in this expression right there. So let's go ahead and do so. So we have filled in and highlighted that kinetic energy. We just need to algebraically simplify it just a touch. So we have a fraction over a whole number, um, the whole number being m. We can put that over one. We can apply the division of fractions rule. It's a little bit of keep, change, flip. So what we would do is keep the first fraction the same. We could also multiply the two and the four here. So we're gonna have eight K sub E Q squared over D radical five. So we kept that first fraction the same. We change the problem from division to a multiplication. Then we flip the M over one to one over M. And then we just multiply across. So we multiply the numerators across and we get eight K sub E Q squared over M times D radical five. That would be the correct answer. If you prefer to write it in exponential notation, you could also do eight K sub E Q squared over M D radical five, all of which would be raised to the power of one half. So either one of those expressions would be correct for part D.